What is the number one question you get asked in your seminars? One of the things that um, I always get is the fear of failure. You know, it's the fear of failure. And what I always tell people that way is that I was terrified of failure. That was like my, you know, terrifying, you know, you're leaving this swanky law job and you're going to go find yourself and be a writer. And, you know, I'm terrified that people are going to think, oh, my God, she should have kept her day job, you know. Right. Uh, but uh, I always had this fantasy when I was an attorney that at the end of my life, there'd be all these beings in white robes and they would have showed me everything my life could have been. Here was the editor you were going to meet. Here was the agent you were going to meet. Here were all the people lining up to buy your books. And it was this fantasy like, oh my God, my dreams really could have happened. But I didn't take those steps. I didn't make that happen. And I thought, oh my God, I can't do that. I can't like face that movie at the end of my life knowing I didn't even try it. I didn't even go for it. So what I tell my clients all the time is that I think we fear regret. I mean, we fear failure a lot, but I think you fear regret more. You can't plan an inspired life. You know, so many people are trying to figure out how it happens and that they're listening to their fear more than the love inside them, more than these extraordinary gifts inside them. And so I want, want you to know, I tell all my clients, I would brand it on them if I could, you can't plan an inspired life. And what I mean by that, like an example, you know, when I had this dream to write, I didn't know how it was going to happen. I didn't know how it was going to make it happen. I spent 12 years writing my first book, and I didn't have an agent, I didn't have a contract, I didn't have a publisher, but you're listening to that extraordinary gift in you. You're listening to that genius that only you have. And when I finally put that book out there, I self-published it, and I put it out in the world, and I got the courage which to do to it. Which had to be scary. Which was scary as heck, because you're thinking, what if I'm just delusional, you know? Um, and I think people are always asking these, these questions, and you have to decide, am I listening to the love inside me or the fear? When I fr finally put it out there, four months after I put it out there, I got an email out of the blue that literally said, your fairy godmother has arrived. Which, you know, on email, I thought it was going to be spam. You know, I thought it was going to be Russian girls <laughs> Some are crazy waiting for person. you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it was uh, vice president of marketing and publicity for Random House. And she found my first book, This Time I Dance. And she said, oh, my God, this is the best book I've ever read on finding your calling, on finding your genius. I want to get it to a major New York house. She did. Uh, it was the publisher I dreamed of. And had I done it a conventional way, had I, like, sat down and planned everything out and tried to figure it out, a, I would have freaked myself out, but I never would have ended up at the level I ended up at. And so that's why I always tell my clients, you, you can't plan these things. Mm -hmm. You can't plan an inspired life. You can follow that inspiration, that genius in you, and everybody has it. Everybody has something extraordinary. We want to hear from you. Like us, tweet us at Rebecca Jarvis, and comment below. From the studios in New York City, I'm Rebecca Jarvis. Have a great day.